Most people don't know that when the Titanic left Southampton Harbor on its maiden voyage, it actually had a near miss, almost horrible accident. The ship passes so close to the dock liner, the New York, that it snaps the boat's mooring lines, almost causing a nasty collision. It was excellent action by tugboat pilots that prevented a crash before the Titanic even got out to sea. Captain Smith shoulders the blame for the near miss, just like he gets the blame for the disastrous collision four days later, and all because he's out to beat a speed record. Check your bearings, mate. One of the most persistent myths about the Titanic is that Captain Smith was being pressured into running the ship at high speed in dangerous conditions. That was a flat out impossibility. She never reached her top speed. He certainly wanted to be punctual, everybody did in those days, but he wasn't rushing. According to the ship's logs, Captain Smith follows standard operating procedures. He gradually increases Titanic speed during the course of the voyage. Five of the 29 boilers aren't even lit at the time of the crash. But even though the captain isn't speeding, history is right to cite him for ignoring all those iceberg warnings. That's a negative. After receiving several ice alerts by radio, Captain Smith steers a more southern course, trying to avoid any danger. You didn't slow down a ship necessarily for icebergs. I mean, he continued the ship on with the belief that if they could see an iceberg in time, they'd be able to avoid it. Icebergs were considered more like a nuisance than a real safety hazard. It's like debris in the road. You might want to go around it, but it's not going to kill anybody. And some ships had actually hit icebergs. They came back with dented hulls. Nobody was hurt. Even so, it's widely held that Captain Smith does ignore one specific warning on the night of the disaster. Captain Smith did not receive the warning about the specific iceberg that they ultimately struck. And that mistake sets the Titanic tragedy in motion. On the night of April 14th, Jack Phillips, the Titanic's wireless operator, is frantically transmitting a huge backlog of messages for passengers. They were supposed to give priority to navigational and distress messages, things like that. But the passenger messages were the bread and butter because those were paid messages. Only a few miles away, Cyril Evans, the wireless operator for a ship called the Californian, interrupts the line to warn Phillips of immediate icebergs. But Phillips isn't listening. He told him twice, shut up, shut up. I'm sending these, these personal messages. I think Phillips was under a lot of pressure to get that work done, and he wasn't quite as attentive as he should have been to the warnings. That message never left the wireless room. So there was no chance for the officers on the bridge to be even aware that the Titanic was heading into an ice field. And straight into the history books.